Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if you command me to come out on the water, I will. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got in the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is certainly one of those scripture readings that we know very well. And it's probably one of those scriptures that every preacher says to themselves, what am I going to say on this particular scripture? Because everybody knows it better than I do. Well, what I want to do is I want to give you a little background to the scripture in order to tease out a theme that I saw in the scripture I did not see in the past. The first story that we remember is before the feeding of the 5,000 that we probably read last week. Prior to that, John the Baptist had been beheaded. And Jesus was very, very moved by that particular experience, and no doubt he was in grief. He wanted to be alone. He wanted to get away. But when he started to leave, the crowds came after him. And when we talk about crowds, we're talking of people who are depressed, people who are lame, people who are hungry, people who have leprosy, people who have all kinds of issues, and their helpers and their families, and people who want to just look and see and gawk to see what happens. And all of these people come to Jesus. When Jesus is already tired, grieving, and looking for some time for himself. But what happens there is that Jesus denies himself and he reaches out to the people. He blesses them. He comforts them. He heals them. And then the disciples, no doubt, probably saw in Jesus' face his exhaustion. And so they come to Jesus and tell him, look, Jesus, send these people away. You know, let them go find food in the, in the cities because they probably saw how tired he was and how much in need he was of some rest. But Jesus says, no, 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 you feed them. And of course, that was one of the great miracles where he had just a few fish and a few loaves of bread. And through his prayer and his uh, 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 moment with God, he was able to multiply these fishes and these bread and all of them were able to eat. But once they ate, he finally, the people left, and finally he sends the disciples away. This time he probably just pushes them onto the boat and tells them to get away because he wants some time to himself. But what he does during that time is really wonderful. He goes off, and he prays, and he spends time with God. And in spending time with God, he gets renewed. He finds his strength. He finds his direction. He finds his ground. He finds his being again. And it's an important part of our lives to recognize that one of the things I start to hear through this from that point on is that he's reconnecting. Jesus is reconnecting to the very source of life that he depends on. He spends time with God praying and being renewed and being re regrounded in all that he does. And you know that I have taken some time myself uh, in the last couple of weeks. And I went to the Redwoods because Maria and I had made these reservations about a year ago before we knew about the COVID and so forth. But we, we felt it was a good time to go. And I went there and I was just enchanted with the place. I don't know if you've ever been the presence of the Redwoods by the, uh, by the ocean in, in Eureka County. It is a mystical experience to walk in and to experience the silence, the silence that Elijah had perhaps experienced where he, you wait for something to speak to you. You know they're listening to you. You feel the presence of the trees, of something deeply interfused into all of this reality around you. I saw the moss on the floor, and I must admit, 
I felt a weird, ta- a real desire to taste it, and I did. It was terrible. Anyway, but I tasted it because I wanted to be so close to this reality. I tasted that. I hugged the tree, okay? And then after hugging the tree, I lied down on the floor because I wanted to feel the energy. I wanted to feel so close to the earth that I lied backwards and then I lied forward. And of course, Maria's looking at me like I'm some strange person wondering what in the world am I doing? But I felt at that moment that I wanted to be as close to this reality that I could. Never mind that there are 260 versions of birds that fly above the trees. Never mind that there are all kinds of mollusks crawling all over the place and that some of the flowers bloom endlessly throughout the year. The ferns are so green and fresh. And what you feel there is a peace and a renewal, a reconnection into the very life force that we all are so very much eager to participate in. And so when I come back, I come back with an eagerness to reconnect. And I think this is what Jesus was trying to do when he came back, that he started to walk on the water. Now, many of us say to ourselves, wow, what a miracle Jesus walks on water. And it probably is true. But I want to see it as Jesus walking over the troubles of his life, Jesus walking over the chaos and over the mayhem that he was under prior to his reconnecting with God. And so he's he's walking on the water looking real good because I imagine his hair was all combed, his eyes were all shiny, his face was bright because he had been connected again with God. He's coming down, and then Peter, the first thing he says, he looks at him, he says, I want some of that. He says, Jesus, command me. And I can imagine Jesus saying, all right, if you really want to. Because Jesus can never command you to overcome your problems, in a sense. He can be with you when you're in the problems, but he cannot command you to overcome your problems. And so Peter gets on the water. When he gets on the water, he realizes that the water and the storm and the problems of his life are so great and so huge that he begins to sink. And immediately he cries out to Jesus, Lord, help me. And so Jesus reaches out with a hand and brings him to the boat. The story is a wonderful story about reconnecting. Because what we have in the first part is Jesus reconnecting with God, reinfusing himself with the, with the reality and with the knowledge that he is a son of God and that he is on this earth to bring good and care for, and care for, uh, for others. And then Peter realizes that he needs to be reconnected to Jesus, not as a miracle worker, but as a person who guides and helps and leads in, in particular situations. Now, I think it's a wonderful sermon and a wonderful um, time for us to think about our own reconnection. Because in this time, we feel disconnected. I'll be honest with you. When I left, I was really depressed because I see all the hard, bad things that are going on in our environment, the people that are without work, uh, the people struggling uh, to pay their rent, to buy food for their kids. We saw long lines of people in cars, really nice-looking, expensive cars uh, for food because they don't have food. And I find myself torn apart trying to reconcile how a country that is so rich and powerful is so inept in taking care of its people. And then the hardship that people are carrying and the pain that they're holding on. And I felt myself, I don't, like I wanted nothing to do with this. I I, I wanted to get away. I wanted to run away. I I wanted to just to run on the water. (laughs) But then I started to sink because I realized I can't do this thing myself. I have no power to overcome the chaos in the world or the problems of the world. Only God can do that. Only God can take care of this. And so what I realized as I was going up to this place of the Redwoods is that I must be reconnected, regrounded, re-fertilized in the ground with God because I had lost my centering. I had lost my footing. And that's why I started to feel weak and I started to feel depressed and I started to feel angry and distrustful of many things. But when I regrounded myself in that sense of God, and I could almost hear this in the silence, this peacefulness. And it's almost, it, it, it's almost as though you're in, in a cathedral where all the, the trees are waiting to hear you. It's a magical feeling. And so I realized that I have to come back and that I have to reconnect with all of you, with myself, with my family, with many people. You know, that's why we make love. That's why we hug. That's why we kiss. That's why we hold hands. 
That's why we have little dogs that we can pet. We need to feel. We are feeling people. And without that feeling, there's a sense of emptiness. I need to get back in touch with everything that has life around me because that is the only way I will get life back. Now, if you don't connect, if you don't hug, if you don't kiss, or if you don't interact with people, you are separated. You are, you are away from the very source that can reground you and heal you. And so today I invite you to try something that you probably may have forgotten. And that is hug your wife, hug your husband, embrace your little dog, kiss your kids, make love, walk on the beach if you can, put a mask on, but walk on the beach, touch the plants, feel the breeze, sit under the shade, have a good glass of wine, laugh, love again, reconnect with people. They, you may have differences with them, you may have problems with them, but reconnect because there will never be a perfect situation where you will have everything that you want in any human being. And that's why Jesus grabs Peter. Peter, and he says, why do you have so little faith? He saves Peter, puts him in the boat, and teaches him that even in spite of his little faith, God will never let you go. When you're sinking in your life, when you're lost in the valley, when you have lost your direction, God will grab you somehow through something, through someone, and will pull you back in the boat, back into his care, back into his love. And so today, St. Timothy, as hard as it is for us to go through this time, and believe me, it is difficult, it is wearing, it is frustrating. We have each other. We have each other to hold on to. We have each other to embrace. We have each other to look at, to talk to, to walk with. And this is where God is. This is where the Christ is, the incarnated reality of God, the beauty of the essence of the fullness of richness is in you and me. Let us embrace it between us. Let us reconnect. Call somebody you haven't called in, in a long time. Call somebody you might be upset with. Call out and connect again. Because this is where we find our humanity and this is where we touch the hem of the holy. So Jesus comes and he walks on water because the troubles that he had no longer dominated him, no longer were flooding him. He now was above it. He now was walking on them. And that's what happens when we, we fall in love again, when we connect again to each other, and we find the sense of purpose and meaning and direction in our life. No matter what the storm is around us, no matter the cloudiness, no matter the earthquakes, no matter the shattering rocks, we listen to the voice of God, we reconnect to the ground of being, and we find our sense of direction again with God. This is what God offers us. He's offered it always. The kingdom is only a blink away a touch away, a kiss away. So let's reconnect. Let's touch again. Amen.